Hello, dear students. So this is our uh, fifth lecture on the series of lectures that I am uh, uh, uploading. And this uh, lecture is on uh, step potential. So today we are going to discuss very interesting features of this kind of potential, which we call a step potential, and uh, how quantum mechanics provides us very interesting results. That's we'll, we're going to look into the mechanism uh, uh, with which the working mechanism of, of, of quantum mechanics. Good. Before I get started, before we actually start today's uh, topic, I will just remind you what we did in our last two lectures, last couple of lectures. Uh, let's remind what we did in last couple of lectures. In, in our, uh, in our um, lecture three, we talked about infinite potential value. And what was this uh, all about? So I said that uh, there's a particle that is confined in a, in a potential well where the walls are of infinite in extent, then this uh, particle cannot be at rest. So classically it can be at rest, but when we give a quantum mechanical treatment, treat this particle as some sort of a wave, and apply wave equation, which we call as Schrodinger equation, it turns out that there is a minimum energy that's associated with the particle. That energy we call as zero point energy. Then the particle can have other discrete energy levels, which are given by n square times the minimum energy. And um, further, we also, we also plotted the wave functions and the probability densities. After solving Schrodinger equation, we were able to obtain the wave function, the normalized wave function for the particle in the box. And, uh, and uh, then we plotted that wave function for various values of n. So these were some first three values of n, these plots, this is the plot for n equal to one, this is the plot for n equal to two, and this is the plot for n equal to three. And then I told you that if we look, uh, sorry, <laughs> So this you know, had to be a straight line, so I'm sorry, and if it is not going that way. Okay, we can see that with respect to this middle of the box, right? The wave function is either symmetric or anti-symmetric, right? And um, the, that means the solutions are either odd or they are even even functions. And then we also plotted probabilities and we figured out that the probability is not what classical mechanics predicts. Classically and the particle is equally likely to be everywhere in the box. But quantum mechanically, it depends on what the energy state, in what energy state the particle is in. So say in the ground state, the particle has more probability to be found in the middle of the box, right? So this is something which is only quantum mechanical result. Classically, this is not possible. Classically, if a particle is in a box, uh, which is a uh, uh, hard rigid box, potential is infinite on the walls, then uh, the probability of finding the particle is same everywhere. But quantum mechanically, we found a very different result. Classically, and the particle can have any range of energies. Quantum mechanically, the particle can only have discrete amount, discrete uh, levels or discrete energy levels, right? So these are some interesting factors that we learned about this potential. Then our next job was to make the potential finite. And here we had three regions of interest. And uh, we, we, we had the region one, the region two, and the region three. And we solved Schrodinger equation for these three regions. And then we came to the conclusion that the equations cannot be solved analytically and because we end up with this transcendental equation. And that the, the equation solutions, the solutions of the equation are dependent on the, these dimensionless parameters. We introduce dimensionless parameters so that we can make sense of the solutions. And, and these, it is actually easy to work in dimensionless parameters, okay, for, for, for simplicity. So then uh, we, we, we found that, uh, that this equation can only be solved through numerical techniques. We can use computers and solve this numerically. Analytical solution for such equations is not possible, but then we plotted it to get some understanding of uh, what is happening in this problem, right? So what we did is that we plotted it, uh, we plotted some graphs. We had these uh, allowed values for, uh, this is uh, 
what we plotted. So we plotted even and odd uh, solutions. And uh, okay, so this was Z and Z. This is when you pick up uh, even, uh, even wave functions, okay? And uh, this minus Z called Z is the solution when you pick up all wave functions. So, and then we can plot uh, this uh, root of Z naught square minus Z square. So we, we uh, end up with a circle that uh, you know, intersects at these uh, points with the even odd functions and uh, solutions. And then these points of intersection represent energy levels. And then we figured out that for finite potential well, doesn't matter how small you have the potential, there is at least one energy level because you can always draw, doesn't matter how small the Z or the radius is, you will have at least one point of intersection. So it's a very interesting result that uh, if your finite potential well is not that deep, it's as weak as possible, even then you have at least one energy level in this system. And uh, then uh, next is that we plotted uh, the wave functions and probabilities and also compared infinite at finite square. Well, this is what we did in our last couple of lectures. Now today we are going to discuss about a very interesting problem is called step potential problem. Before we actually start solving the problem and tell you something, uh, some interesting facts that we obtain after giving a quantum mechanical treatment, we'd like to have a classical visualization of what we are talking about. Suppose classically you have a body, okay? Say you have a, have a ball. This ball has an energy which is moving on a floor and it has energy say E. Right, this energy of the ball is E, and which is greater than the energy, potential energy of this hill which it is meeting. So it is greater than V naught. Then what is going to happen? It's going to roll down and it's going to climb the hill and then it's going to move with a lower velocity. So it will move with constant velocity in this region, right? It will climb the hill, and then it will move with lower velocity in this region. But there is no chance that it can come back because its energy is more than the energy of the hill it is meeting. And in case you have a higher hill more than the energy of the particle, then the particle will go to some point on the hill and then will turn back and 100% will come back, right? So these are the classical visualizations of a potential step. So step potential means in that the body is in having have some constant potential here, moving when it's moving on a, on, a, on a level surface, then it happens to meet a step potential. And then again, that potential remains constant. So there are two regions of interest. It is this region, this is the region one, and this is the region two. And the both regions, the potential is constant. Here, the potential is zero in region one, in region two, the potential is V naught. Now we have two choices. We may pick up a particle whose energy is greater than V naught. In classical case, it is going to go over. But quantum mechanically, we will find a very interesting result. And then we have another choice to pick the energy less than the step. And then classically, it is going to come back. But quantum mechanically, we'll see that it really, it is, is it really going to come back or it has some interesting results. So our job is that now we again have particle or we have beam of particles, doesn't matter, whose energies are more than the potential step. So what we are expecting classically that they will go over and they will go over with lesser speed. But let us see that if we give away mechanical treatment of this, these particles, if we apply Schrodinger equation, the solid Schrodinger equation, what are the results? Are the results matching to the classical ones or we have something interesting coming up here. So let us see what the quantum mechanical treatment of this problem will give us. Okay, so let's move to the next slide and try to explain you everything here. So this is actually the important slide that you should try to absorb each and every line here. See there, now the first thing is that you need to write down Schrodinger equation. So again, the potential is constant. There is no time dependence on the potential. So all I need is to solve time independent Schrodinger equation. So I will look for the solutions of time independent Schrodinger equation. So therefore what I do here is, uh, okay, I will solve this equation. Fine. So now, first of all, I will solve it for region one. 
and region one we know that v is zero all right so v is zero in this region one since v is zero there so this term will go away right so v is zero for x is less than zero so i will write down the schrodinger equation so v is zero v is gone so now my schrodinger equation is minus h bar square by 2m d2 psi by dx square is equal to e psi i will just take this 2m and h bar square on the other side and i get this equation <coughs> and you can see this equation there so it is d2 psi x by dx square is equal to minus twice m by h bar square e psi so this is where this equation is valid when x is less than zero right now i can pick up this constant h bar square e 2m e by h bar square and call that constant as k1 okay i call this as k1 so i can now write down the equation as d2 psi by dx square is equal to minus k1 square psi of x where k1 is a positive number so this is the differential equation that i am going to solve and now you can write an auxiliary equation here you can just write d square right try to solve this differential equation d square is equal to minus k1 square right k1 square because an ordinary differential equation in one dimension it will give d is plus minus i times k and i can write down solutions in terms of i k1 right so that you keep in mind and then you have uh, to solve equation in this region and in this region i write down the schrodinger equation so for this region since the potential is v not so for vx i have to write down v not so i am writing uh, d2x psi of x by dx square and i put these things on this side and keep it in mind since e is greater than v not therefore e minus v not is positive and since e minus v not is positive so i write e minus v not on this side so therefore you have to be careful here that uh, you okay so <clears throat> so we have this uh, vx so vx will put v not and uh, keeping in mind that e minus v not is positive so i have schrodinger equation in the region in this region i have a schrodinger equation and uh, the form of the schrodinger equation is d2 psi of x by dx square is equal to minus twice m by h bar square e minus v not psi of x now what i do here is that i pick up another positive constant k2 which i write root of twice m e minus v not by h bar square and i rewrite the schrodinger equation in this form so i write it in this form right in the form of k2 so i write d2 psi of x by dx square is equal to minus k2 square psi of x now k2 again is a positive constant again i write the auxiliary equation it would have the same kind similar kind of solutions because my auxiliary equation would be d of square again would be equal to equal to minus k2 of square fine so exact similar kind of solutions are expected in this region also so now i write down the solutions for for the region 1 for this region i write down the solutions and i write down the solutions for the region 2 and expect similar only difference would be that for region 1 we have a propagation vector k1 and for region 2 the propagation vector we also call it as propagation vector is k2 the solutions will be is very alike very similar all right so i write down those solutions now okay so for uh, x is uh, x is uh, uh, less than 0 you have the region solution for the region 1 psi of 1 of x is a to power i k 1 of x plus b to power minus i k 1 of x so these are actually periodic functions right uh, and and we can see that if you multiply with the for time a uh, dependent solution they will be just uh, the you know, plane waves uh, going in one positive direction and the waves coming in the negative direction so basically if i interpret the solution it represents uh, a wave that is moving in this direction and a wave that is actually reflected backwards so the first part of would be actually a wave that is going in the 
forward direction in the positive direction and the second part is a wave that is moving in the backward direction so this is the interpretation of the solution anyway the third region this is the the second region the, the region 2 that is this region so what are the solutions in this region region 2 so region 2 i have psi of 2 of x is c to power k2 i k2 of x d e to power minus i k2 x so again there are two solutions one is uh, one is uh, one is a wave going in forward direction another is a wave actually coming in backward direction fine but there is actually nothing coming from in the backward direction because there is no reflection anywhere because the potential is constant we don't expect any kind of reflected portion of the wave so therefore this this part of the wave does not make any sense so this part of the solution does not make any sense therefore we pick up b equal to zero because we expect that once the wave goes in the other medium there is nothing from which it can actually come back if either goes but here we may expect okay there could be two solutions one is the instant solution and other can be interpreted as the reflected solution and we may say that the incoming beam is actually a superposition of the two solutions once we interpret it in terms of the wave picture so here since there is nothing that is actually coming from from this side therefore the only way that this makes sense is that we pick up b equal to zero right and then we apply the continuity and finiteness of the wave functions we know that across the sense the boundary is finite the wave function must be continuous across the boundary the solutions on this side should match with the solutions on that side so we say that psi one of zero should be equal to psi two of zero and the derivative by twos should also match at the boundary that gives us when psi one is zero we will put here x is zero this is one here x is zero this again is exponential is one so since this is one this is one and this simply is a plus b and on that side again this would be one because x is zero k2 e to power zero is one so it would be c so we will simply get a plus b is equal to c so we are able to actually write down the constants we are able to match the constants uh, that is the amplitudes of the of the incoming beam with the beam that is actually passing on the other side and then uh, we are uh, also will uh, will will just see how the derivatives match and they will give us k1a minus k2b is equal to k2c so we have two equations one a plus b equal to c where the amplitudes of the incoming beams uh, actually are related with the amplitudes of the beam that is going uh, into the other side and also the in terms of propagation constants because the derivatives should also match at the boundary that gives us k1a minus k1b is equal to k2c now we solve them simultaneously what you can do is that just uh, you multiply here k1 we can multiply k1 on both sides then add k1b and k1b will cancel so a will be in terms of c similarly we can um, put b in terms of we can make these uh, again we can subtract them we can put b in terms of c so both a and b which are the, the amplitudes of the incoming wave can be written in terms of the amplitudes actually c can be written in terms of a and b can be written in terms of a all right because a represents in our interpretation so we say that a is the incoming beam so so that that makes uh, sense so now what we do is that let us see what we get so we find b in terms of a that's what i told you we get b in terms of a so we get b in terms of a in terms of these propagation vectors we can put them in terms of energies as well so we get c in terms of a that's very interesting so c is also in terms of a so again in terms of propagation vectors fine so and then we can calculate the reflection coefficient and the transmission coefficient and uh, that is given by the you you know that your wave function going to the other side is now uh, uh, is uh, is given by see what we have now we have this is the step potential fine so we have an incoming wave right which is represented by a 
a e to power i times kx i times k of sorry for writing badly e to power k of x then there is a beam that is reflected back with the, that wave function of that reflected beam is b e to power minus i k of x okay then there's a transmitted beam right that is c times e to power this is k1 this is k1 because you're in medium k1 and this is uh, i times k2 of x fine so if i want to find reflection coefficient i will have to divide the size size star on on this side all right so once i do that uh, in terms of the probability densities i find the reflection coefficient is b square mod divided by a square mod and that gives k1 minus k2 divided by k1 plus k2 square and this is very interesting because if you exchange k1 and k2 the reflection coefficient remains the same so that means instead of a height if you have a depth it doesn't matter so it still have the same reflection coefficient okay and the transmission coefficient since now there is k2 in that region and here it is k1 so we have to take the probability density here and divide that with the instant beam we get k2 by k1 is small c square by mod a square which turns out to be four times k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 and if we add them the total probability of reflection plus reflection coefficient plus transmit coefficient that should always add to one so what are the different results that we get from classical system uh, very interesting classically and if you have a ball which is beating a potential hill it's not it's not going to come back if it is energy is more than the hill right but here we have a finite uh, probability that actually the beam uh, the particle could be reflected or if you have beam of particles and some particles could be reflected and some particles would go over that is how the wave treatment of the particles gives us a totally different result totally different than we classically expect right and these results make sense once we are doing quantum mechanics once we are dealing with particles like electrons in very confined to small systems these results make a lot of sense so let me summarize what we say that even though though the energy e is um, even though the energy e of the particle is greater than v naught r is not zero that is surprising that's in contrast to the classical expectations some of the particles are reflected from the stuff this is this is this is totally different this is analogous to so this is analogous to we know that electromagnetic waves have this when they meet an interface a part of it is reflected a part gets transmitted but that is a wave and this was a particle and this is how our particles are now behaving like waves and the value of r depends on you see this is also very important it depends on the difference between k1 and k2 but not on which one is larger because if you just turn them around you still have the same r so k1 minus k2 divided by k1 plus k whole square if i say k2 minus k1 i have the same result so it doesn't depend which one is greater so that is a step down potential very important a step down potential produces the same reflection as a step up of the same size that is that is a beautiful result so these two important results you always need to keep in mind because examiners will ask you these questions okay so then we have the other case and that's not that interesting that is when the energy of the instant beam is less than this step and here we expect classically that the particle should come back and actually quantum mechanically we get the same result the particle comes back but it is not reflected at the boundary that is quantum mechanically different it actually goes a little bit inside the boundary and then is reflected that's what is shown in the wave function here there is actually the wave penetrating into the barrier to some depth as allowed by uncertainty principle and then it is reflected back from there so it does not have a negative kinetic energy state it is allowed by the uncertainty principle this much of penetration so it is as per in accordance with what uncertainty allows us so what do you do here you you have the same solution for this region you have the same solution nothing will change because v is again zero only for this region the solution would change because now we introduce alpha as a constant which is a positive constant 
and it's v naught minus e that is positive, not e minus v naught, because now e is lower than v naught, and e minus v naught will be negative, and that gives us in the region third the solution becomes of this type c to power minus alpha x plus d to power alpha x. Now again, we want wave function to be finite as x becomes large. This part of the solution will blow up. It will become larger and larger and will go to infinity, which we don't want because we want our wave functions should be finite. So therefore, this is not acceptable. And the only way we make it acceptable is set d equal to zero. Again, there is another reason for setting d equal to zero. In that setting, then we have we have the wave function that goes to the other side is c to power minus alpha x. And if I calculate probability, it is c square e to power minus twice alpha x. So this is exponentially decaying. So there is a very small probability that the particle is actually going through. And even if it is going through, it is decaying. And then the particle is not transmitted at all. So the transmission coefficient is zero. The particles are completely reflected. The only difference here is that the particles are not reflected at the boundary. They penetrate a little bit as allowed by the principle and then they are reflected. So this was the discussion about the potential step. And I think I have made all important points about the potential step. Now we have finished finite infinite potential well, we have finished finite potential well, and now today we have also finished a step potential. There will be a couple of more interesting uh, problems in like harmonic oscillator, which is a bound system, and also a potential barrier problem. Before we move to the axiomatic, uh, actually before we actually introduce a few more ideas in quantum physics. So till then, take care, and uh, hopefully the lecture was satisfactory. And Thank you. Bye-bye.